Hi, Gohar Vardanyan here with another video for the Strings by Mail Unexplored repertoire series. In this video, I'll be reading through a chanson by a French composer, Roland Dienz. This piece would be perfect for someone with at least intermediate playing skills. And though at first it might not seem too hard, since it's really slow and calm and mostly in the first position, the difficulty of this piece is in its overall dynamic markings. The entire piece, with an exception of one measure, is marked with either piano, pianissimo, and sometimes a mezzo piano, but there are not that many of them either. So we have to play really soft. And the difficulty of playing soft is actually that you have to have really good control over both your hands to avoid any extra noise that can be produced by playing the instrument. When we're playing at a normal level or at a forte, the volume of the note is loud enough where the, the noise that comes from the instrument is kind of camouflaged. But when you're playing piano, any noise from the left hand or the right hand is audible to the listener since the volume of the note is either below or at the same level as the noise. So for example, right here in the beginning, he has it marked piano, and then the repeat of that uh, tiny little phrase is pianissimo. So you have to be very careful, even doing this. If I just take off this too soon, or I don't take it off completely vertically, the, the squeak will be audible here. And playing it again, the string is vibrating and I have to play that bass note. If I'm not really accurate as to when I strike the note, the noise of my nail touching the string will be audible as well. So you have to be very precise when you come back to attack that note. You have to make sure that as you touch the note, you are ready to go through with it and make the sound. Otherwise, there's going to be that silence and noise combined. And when you're playing mezzo forte or forte, that might not be so noticeable since the notes are so loud. But here, every little sound will be heard by the listener. So that makes it difficult. The other part is Dienz is very, very detailed in exactly what he wants. And since he's a composer and a guitarist, he knows this instrument inside and out. So he knows all the effects. And he has them written down. So. As you open the book, you will find a list that have all the markings that you will find in the music and telling you what they mean. So the very first one is PLP. And PLP, what he means by that, he wants you to play the note with your thumb um, with flesh. So usually when we play bass notes, 
it's a combination of nail and flesh together. That's what gives you the, the cleanest and the most powerful round tone. But he wants you to play with no nail, so you either have to play with the side of your uh, finger or kind of the bottom of it. Depends on each finger and how it's comfortable. Either way, you have to get that really soft and fleshy sound. And he has them marked throughout the piece, so you will come across bass notes with PLP written, just like, for example, um, at the return of the, the A section, he has. Because in the beginning, it was normal, but when it returns, he has it uh, with the flesh. And there are markings like that all over the music. The actual music itself, too, the music is half the page, and footnotes are almost the other half of the page. So you will encounter um, little letter markings, which will tell you exactly in the footnote how to play that exact section. So an example of that for um, is here, in the very beginning. He has uh, an M, and the footnote um, to the M is, except when specified with an arpeggio sign, all chords or double notes are to be plucked together. So right there, he tells you not to do this. He wants them together. And whenever he wants them separated, he actually has a squiggly mark for the arpeggio. The other mark is um, footnote N, and that one instructs you to play uh, that note with rest stroke. But it says, note played with rest stroke, but not necessarily forte, nor accentuated. So there, it's so detailed, so he wants you to play rest stroke, but he doesn't want you to play it too loud. And all of the instructions are like that. There's one for harmonics. He wants to make sure that all the harmonics are very clean. And actually, speaking of harmonics, at the very end, there was one change that I made when I played it. Um, he has the harmonics marked here. So he has the, the A on the A string on the 5th fret. When I played it, I played it here. And the reason for that, the next note that you're supposed to play is on a fifth string. It's this. And when you're playing the harmonic on the fifth string, he has all these legato lines, markings, that tells you that it needs to continue ringing. But you can't prepare this because your harmonic is supposed to be still ringing on the fifth string. So I changed it to the fourth string. That way the fourth string can still ring while I prepare my finger and get ready to play the last two notes. And because it's so piano, you almost have to be really careful when you place it so that you don't create any extra noise. And you need that extra time. That's why I wanted the harmonic on the fourth string so I have time to prepare and not just, you know, put the note as I'm playing. That can be inaccurate and make extra noise. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you would like to order the piece, you can find a direct link to the Strings by Mail catalog at the bottom of this video. Thank you for watching.